We've got the Anthem MRX 740 and MRX 1140 AV receivers bench test results. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I know you guys have been waiting a while for me to give my bench test results of these two brand new Anthem AV receivers, the MRX 740 and the MRX 1140. And I'm here to give you the news today. And I want to go over these results with you. Here you can see a picture of the MRX 1140 with my little load resistors on top of it on my cart with my audio precision. And this is going to be a long report. I'm going to warn you, it's not going to be short because I really want to dive into the meaning of the measurements. So people tend to look at measurements sometimes and automatically decide if something is good or bad just by looking at a single measurement or a single number. AudioHawks is not about that. We're about showing you the science and then applying whether or not any of this type of measurements that we measure are going to be problems audibly or if they're going to be superior audibly. So I hope that this brings some light to that. Before we get into all of this measurement stuff, I want to bring some reminders to you guys that we are doing a Heiko 5.1 speaker giveaway courtesy of Audio Advice. They are the sponsor of this. If you go to the links in the video description below, you'll see we have this contest running that we're giving away this 5.1 speaker system through Audio Advice for USA residents. The contest ends at the end of March. So I encourage you guys to register as soon as you can and the winner will be announced we will contact you via email not through the youtube comments below but we'll contact you via email if you win and all i could say is you got to be in it to win it so good luck with that so i want to share now my screen with you guys and just kind of go over this whole test report and we have the full report on the audioholics website that you can access at any time if you want to look over these measurements. And here we are. As I said, on audiohawks.com's homepage right now, this full test report, the written report is there, but it's really important to just go over these results with you guys. So we've got the MRX 740, which retails for $28.99. That has seven channels of amplification built into it. Five of the channels are class AB rated at 140 watts a channel. And then the other two channels are class D rated at 60 watts a channel. And then we got the MRX 1140, which has that same five channel amplifier, 140 by five class AB. And then it's got six channels of class D at 60 watts a channel. And I do have links here through audio advice. If you guys are looking at picking up one of these units, uh, we appreciate your support there. They are a sponsor. And we've got the quick specs right here, and you can read all this on their website. The cool thing about these receivers is the 1140 has 15 channels of processing, and that doesn't include the subwoofers. It's got two independent subwoofer outputs, so you can independently set delay and level for each of those sub outputs. The amplifiers are reassignable, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But 15 channels of processing, 11 channels of amplification, you could run front wides on the 1140, whereas the 740, um, basically only has uh, 13 channels of processing, which is still pretty awesome, but it only has uh, seven channels of amplification. So you are going to have to add amplifiers to that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the pre-amplifier measurements. And the reason why this is important is for you guys out there that are buying an AVR, you might decide to just start out initially with the amplifiers built in to power your whole system. And then you want to expand upon that. Well, Many receivers today don't even have preamp outputs. And the ones that do, some of them tend to have weak preamp outputs. And I'm happy to report that's not the case here. The MRX, both the MRX 740 and 1140 have incredibly good uh, preamp outputs. They do five volts RMS unclipped, unclipped. So you can get a five volt RMS clean signal out of the preamp outputs on this. And as you guys know, and I've said this in the past, you need at least two volts RMS on most amplifiers to get full output out of them. So the fact that these things could put out five volts, that's over double the voltage you need, that's excellent. And what that means is that even if you're not using the five volts RMS, these things are going to be squeaky clean, you know, within the band that you're going to be using them. In this case, you know, probably around two volts RMS will drive 
most amplifiers to full power. And you can see here, I just did this measurement. Um, I'm plotting here voltage versus distortion. This is at one kilohertz, and this is at all um, seven channel outputs on the preamp. And then I'm also showing the Synad results because I know you ASR geeks like to see Synad. Synad is nothing magical. It's just converting the percent distortion to a dB number. And you could see, you know, right around three volts RMS is when you get your maximum or your best performance, your highest Synad, 106 dB, which is like 0.00006% THD. I mean, this is some really quiet stuff right here. This is this is the level uh, you see at very high end dedicated two channel uh, preamps, and you're getting that kind of performance out of an AVR. I mean, this is some of the best preamp outputs I've seen in an AVR. So very impressed with that. As I said here, this thing puts out five over five volts, five point four eight volts at 0.1 percent THD plus N plenty, plenty of drive for your amplifiers. And I like to look at an FFT a spectrum just to see how quiet the amplifier is or the preamplifier is to see if there's any power supply noise or upper harmonic residuals. And you could see with a zero dB FS input through the HDMI, that's a full scale digital input. Uh, with two volts output, I adjusted the volume control till I got two volts RMS output. This thing is squeaky clean. I mean, you could see the power supply harmonics down in the mud. You know, the, the first harmonic is at about 115 minus 115 dB, and then the second one, 120 hertz, about negative 112. I mean, that's really clean. And then if you look at the one kilohertz uh, signal I put through it, the third order harmonic is about 108 dB below the fundamental. I mean, that's just incredibly good, very clean measurement right there. And then I looked at the bandwidth of the preamp outputs, and you could see it's ruler flat down to about, you know, down to about 10 hertz and then the 3 db point is over 70 kilohertz so well beyond the audio band which is 20 kilohertz no problems there this is a world-class preamp that we're seeing in these receivers and then i did a signal to noise ratio again at two volts rms with a zero db fs input and a weighted measurements i got 110 db ignore channel three that's a subwoofer channel it's not producing any input at or output at uh, one kilohertz, but this is a very good number. This is the kind of measurement I get out of my, you know, twenty-four thousand dollars Storm Audio preamp. So very happy with this. Very very happy. And then I did a crosstalk um, comparison. And what what this does? This is a worst case crosstalk. This is when you drive all of the channels with a signal, and then you test the channel that doesn't have a signal. So it's one channel undriven with the other channels driven. That's the worst possible crosstalk you can get. And on the preamp outputs, we're looking at an isolation from channel to channel greater than 70 dB at 20 kilohertz. That's excellent. That's just really good. Very low number right there. So what I want to really stress to you guys is if you're thinking about buying an AV receiver and you initially need the, the um, internal amps, but you want to someday have an upgrade path and you want to add like a two channel, five channel, seven channel amp, whatever, monoblocks. This receiver, both of these receivers are really gonna be the ticket for doing that. They have incredibly good uh, preamp outputs. So I wanna now go into the amplifier stuff and show you all about that. So before we get into the amplifiers, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, and somebody asked me this in the forums, um, does the, do these receivers have an analog bypass? The answer is no, they don't. If you need an analog bypass and you need a phono stage, you're going to have to step up to their AVM70 processor. Um, but these, I wanted to check what would happen when you ran an analog signal into these just to see the quality of the analog to digital converters because I've seen some receivers, the analog to digital converters are usually not a priority because most people these days are using HDMI primarily through their streaming boxes or their Blu-ray players or whatever. It's kind of like a lost stepchild analog has become in these AV receivers. So I measured the frequency response and the corresponding distortion. And this is pretty respectful. Um, you could see in this measurement that these this preamp on the analog input, I'm driving an analog input and I'm measuring the preamp outputs. 
you've got a bandwidth of 50 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. What that means to me is that they're using uh, 96 kilohertz analog to digital converters. That's really good. You don't typically see that. And the distortion's pretty darn low. I mean, it's at, you know, under 0.05% THD plus N at 20 kilohertz, way under that. So that's pretty good. I mean, it's not a horrible measurement. And I went and I looked at the SNR um, at, with a one volt input, two volts RMS output. I got 94 dB A weighted. That's a pretty darn good number as well. Not quite to the level of what we saw with the Anthem STR uh, preamp that I measured years ago. I mean, that's their separate stack. You know, that's $4,000 a unit or more now with the COVID price adjustment. So, yeah, it's not to the level of an STR separate but it's pretty darn good. And if you're just occasionally using your analog inputs on this receiver, you should have no problems at all. I'm actually very happy with that. So I wanna go over base management. I think base management is really important to understand how things work and how you could get your speakers to have the best integration with your subs. Um, every manufacturer has their own version of, you know, playing this, the main speakers large and still having the subwoofer output in two channel. Um, I've never uh, really messed with the base management stuff on the Anthem receivers for quite some time. So I was trying to figure out what they were doing here. So what, in order for you to engage your subwoofer and have your main speaker set large, you have to use a feature called super sub fronts. So if you turn super sub fronts on, and you don't mess with the base management and you leave the receiver with no crossover on the main speakers, you'll get full range out of your main speakers, but your subwoofer will cross over at 40 hertz. That's just the way they have their logic set up. And some people might like that because they just want to get the really low end base response going to their um, subwoofers while they have their main speakers play full range. But other people, if you... Um, if you want to have, you know, an 80 hertz crossover like you normally do in home theater mode, you're going to have to first select a crossover on your speakers. And then in order to keep them playing large, you're going to have to turn on super sub fronts. Because if you go and turn on the crossover and you don't select super sub fronts, your fronts are going to play with a high pass filter at whatever crossover frequency you set. And that's what I show here in these measurements. Um, this, this trace right here, the lighter kind of bluish green trace is is the crossover at 40 hertz and then i switched it to 80 hertz the dark green trace now the slope is not as is not as steep as i'd like it to be it's only a 12 db per octave roll off typically what you want with base management is you want your high pass filter to be second order or 12 db per octave and you want your low pass to be fourth order or 24 db per octave so i brought this up with anthem and i showed them my measurements and they confirmed them. And um, again, I'll show you that here. This is with the initial firmware that I had. Um, perfect 12 dB per octave high pass, but only 12 dB per octave on the low pass. Um, so I wanted to see if they could improve that. And they went and that's exactly what they did. About a week or two later, I got a beta firmware uh, sent to me. And now I confirmed that I'm getting 24 dB per octave on the uh, low pass filter. And then the dotted line is the super sub fronts just to show you I could still have that feature working as well. So I'm very happy to see that Anthem made a running change in their firmware. I do encourage you to download the latest firmware in your unit. Um, if you're operating it now, just get into the on-screen, uh, the web interface and just go and update your firmware and you should be good to go. I'm not sure exactly when they released the version of firmware that fixes the base management. At the time of me doing this video, uh, this is a beta, but they claim within a couple of weeks. So maybe by the time in April of 2022, you should have the latest firmware that does this uh, base management. So now I wanna go over the power amp measurements. Now I reviewed and I measured uh, the, uh, the 740 and the 1140, and I don't show too much redundancy of measurements where the measurements are similar. I'm trying to, you know, keep the graphs down. Otherwise this becomes just too mundane, but I will tell you a couple of things. Um, both of the units are rated at the same power, but the 1140 actually has a toroid transformer and the 740 has an e-core transformer. 
So here we see uh, with two channels driven on the 740 at eight ohms, I do full bandwidth sweeps as well as one kilohertz power sweeps like you see with the most of the magazines that still do reviews. And we got a power of, uh, with both channels driven, we got 130 watts a channel. Uh, it's a little shy of, of their ratings, but that's at 0.1%. When I do my power sweeps versus at full bandwidth, I adjust it so I could get around 0.1% THD across the whole band or less. Uh, so 130 watts a channel with both channels driven at very low distortion or 145 watts a channel um, with one channel driven on the 740. Now the 1140 was a little bit more powerful. The 1140 actually measured 153 watts a channel for two channels driven at 0.1%. So there is a little advantage to the 1140 with their better power supply. Uh, and the 1140 was able to do uh, 203 watts at four ohms continuous, but it was only momentary. Uh, within about a couple of hundred milliseconds, it would current limit down to 163 watts. So even though the uh, Anthem doesn't have an impedance switch like some of these other receivers, it does appear to be doing current limiting when you're when it sees a four ohm load, but it doesn't affect the measured results in eight ohm loads, which is a good thing. So I think that's a pretty decent compromise for them to be making. So next I wanted to show you um, five channels driven, the class AB amplifiers. And this is again with the 740. And you can see we've got uh, 85 watts a channel at 0.1% and 89 watts a channel at 1%. That's with all five channels driven. So that's pretty good. I mean, there's they're not current limiting like you see with, with uh, um, some of the receivers when I do all channels driven tests, they just kind of go to like 50 watts or less. You're getting pretty uh, respectable power here, not too bad. Not a powerhouse, but definitely not too bad. The the sign ad uh, is pretty good. It's in you know a little bit above 80 dB here, so that's pretty respect respectable right there. So I want to show you. I did a power test uh, when the 1140 with two channels driven with four ohms, and again um, the 740 limited it to about 163 watts. This one did I think 173 at 0.1% and 176 at 1%. So it's definitely current limiting. You're not getting as much power as you would think you would get in a forum load because they're just trying to protect the receiver. And I can totally respect that. It's not like off the wall. They're not dropping it down to 50 watts or anything like that. So I want to show you at um, an FFT at one watt because one watt is really important to know if you have low distortion and low noise, because that's where you're doing some critical listening and you can hear problems more readily when, you know, the signal's much lower. So the 740, um, the harmonics, the, there's some power supply residuals. They are not stellar. They're okay. I mean, they're at minus uh, 70 something dB or minus 80 dB at 60 Hertz. So not something you're going to hear, but there's definitely some harmonics in this measurement uh, that are lower on the 1140. So the 1140 definitely has uh, an improved power supply, as you can see in this measurement. So that's a pretty good measurement right there. Neither of them are of any real concern. It's just more academic than anything. I did not hear any humming or noise when I was listening to these amplifiers. And then I did a dynamic burst test. That's basically trying to simulate music. Um, it's a CEA 2006 burst test. And it shows you that these amplifiers have a lot of headroom. That um, with a CEA 2006 pulse, I got 315 watts, both channels driven at four ohms. That's pretty impressive. Pretty good right there. Um, I wanted to test the class D amplifier section separately from the ABs. So I went and I did just that. The only thing I could say about this is I'm a little disappointed that the class D amplifier is not flat out to 20 kilohertz. They definitely have the way they did the filtering on this thing, I guess, to filter out some noise is pretty aggressive. So the three dB points are like 20 Hertz and at 17 kilohertz. So it's okay because you're using this as an Atmos channel, but I would not reassign these amplifiers to buy amp the front channels. And currently the amp matrix allows you to do that. And I spoke with Anthem about changing that. I think 
they should what they should do is they should reassign maybe the class ABs you're not using for the front channels if you want to buy it. But we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on. So yeah, there is some bandwidth limiting on this class D amp, but it does hit its power spec and then some. So I drove uh, four channels at a time and I got 60 watts at 1% and 53 watts at 0.1% and more power than that with only two channels driven. And I'll show you the power matrix in a second. I think it was like 70 watts a channel for two channels driven. So definitely meeting it there. The FFT at one watt is really clean. It's actually, I'm really impressed by how clean that is. As you can see here, the residuals are down, you know, 101 dB below the fundamental. Very good there. And then the dynamic burst power, I got 103 watts a channel. So that's good. Good, good margin on those uh, amplifiers. So if you guys want to really spend the time and look at all the different power measurements, I tried to tabulate everything I did here. Um, in fact, there's more, me there's more measurement data in these tables than what I showed in my graphs. So basically I have a table for the 740. It shows you how many channels are driven, you know, the, the type of test, the power, the load, and the THD. And then I did that for the 1140. And then I did a combined one for the class D amp section because they're similar on both receivers. So you can see all the data here. And then I did some crosstalk checks on the amplifier side. And I still got a pretty good result. It was like minus 50 dB channel to channel at 20 kilohertz. Not bad. Um, again, this is a worst case crosstalk analysis. That's with all the channels driven and one channel undriven. So it's probably about 10 dB worse than reality if it's just one channel driven and then you're checking an adjacent channel. So it's still pretty good. So the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, amplifier matrix in. So currently the way you can do this and when you get into the web interface, and I did a vi separate video on this and I'll put it in the play cards. You have different ways you can configure the amplifier matrix and the front channels can be as assigned as front zone, zone two, front wide or height three. And you could see the whole matrix here. So what I proposed to them was why not be able to adjust or, or re-divert the front channels and the surround channels, which are the class AB amps. Let us go to the height one and two on those and then maybe put the class D amplifiers to another zone if you want to do distributed audio in the house. Or at the same time, if you want to take those surround amplifiers and reroute them as bi amp to the front, I definitely don't think the height one and two channels should ever, or the back channels, which are all the class D amps, those should never be uh, reassigned to the front for bi amping because there's like a 3.7 dB loss of output going from 140 watts, 140 watts to 60 watts. Not a good idea to bi amp a speaker if it's not equal power in most cases. So yeah, that's that's about it. A um, couple of things I want to say. The, the, the Anthem 740 and 1140, they're not maybe the class leaders in terms of power output compared to some of their competitors at their price points, but their preamp sections are top notch. And the fact that these receivers don't get hot when they're in a rack um, is awesome. And I think that's one of the reasons why they went with the class D amplifiers for the other channels. They just wanted to keep the heat of the chassis down. So when people are putting these in racks, it's not acting like a space heater. Cause I've got, you know, I've got the Marantz SR 8015, which, I, which I love, but that receiver gets really hot because you've got 11 channels of linear AB amplifiers running the quiescent current biasing all of those linear ABs at the same time. And a chassis that was really designed for seven channels, the thing runs hot and you got to put like an AC infinity on top of it, or just keep a door open in a closet, or you got to keep the airflow going with the anthems. They run much cooler. So yeah, you are trading off some power by, by doing what they're doing with the class AB amps and their linear amps may not have as much output drive at four ohms. But what I do, what I will tell you is if you go with the 740 or the 1140, use those internal amps to power at least the high, ch high channels, maybe your surround channels and get a really good Anthem five channel amp. They make great amps. They make a two channel, they make a five channel, get one of their amps or any amp, any of your favorite amps and pair it with this. And you've got yourself a killer pair of separates with some convenient amplifiers built into this chassis. So you have future expandability here. I know they're going to be doing some HDMI 2.1 upgrades sometime down the road. And I'm going to be doing a separate video on Anthem Arc Genesis and show you guys, you know, my calibration results and how to best get, you know, the 
every bit of performance you can out of that. So that'll be coming. I'll also do a full integrated review when I have all my speakers plugged into this. So there'll definitely be more coverage coming on these receivers. But I can tell you, I'm very pleased uh, overall with what I'm seeing in these AVRs, especially on the preamp outputs. Um, I'm happy that they did not skimp there. So I want to get some comments from you guys down below. Are you an Anthem user? Are you using the preamp outputs on them? How do you have your MRX uh, 740 or 1140 configured? And which one do you think is the best receiver for you? I mean, is it worth spending a little bit extra money to get the 1140? So you have up to 15 channels of processing. I think it is personally. Uh, I want to hear your comments down, down below. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. Don't forget about our Heyco giveaway. The links are down below. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.